What is going down people? Finally back with another video. Today I wanted to do like a quick mall tutorial kind of base video. Um, mainly because I've been out all weekend and I totally forgot to film anything when I was working on this hike which would have been like a sick video. And two, I just thought I'd break down like more of the beat side of things when it comes to making beats that actually sell. Because there's a few things that I feel like producers kind of fall into. They fall into a routine of making like similar kind of melodies, drums that are kind of like too busy, uh, and just some things that like fills out too much space for the artist to kind of think of lyrics and kind of flow on it, you know, structure as well the kind of melodies, the kind of instruments. So, see, so yeah, I'm gonna cook a beat up, I'm gonna go through what my thought process is. That way you can kind of think about the same things and apply some changes to your beats because we all have different sounds. I'm not gonna go like key by key, but I'm gonna explain like just the train of thought that I go through that's kind of helped me to make beats that, are, that have like lots of space, but sound super unique, super catchy. Uh, so yeah, enough running from me. All right, let's get into this. So I'm gonna assume that 90% of you start off with the melody. I've got this melody right here. Okay, so the melody in itself was pretty simple. I only used three chords and you know, the whole eight of them is pretty easy. C minor, G sharp minor, and G major, okay? And that, that sounds a bit weird, but I'll explain exactly why I did this and didn't know this until recently, but it, it helps. So, start off with C minor. Now you may think, why have you got D as the root note? I haven't actually, the, the root note is C still. The only thing I did is transpose the C note to the top and kind of strummed it out like a triple effect, just, just so it gives it like a different vibe. Same thing for the G sharp minor chord right here, just so we've got that kind of consistent D hitting right here. Then I went back to C, and then right here I went to G major. Kind of want to keep that kind of consistency within the melody, you know, consistent notes close together, and that's what gives it that tension. In addition to that, you can add that extra tension with ending in a major chord. A little cheat sheet, G major goes really well with C minor. I'll play it through again so you guys can hear it. So C minor, G sharp minor, C minor, G major. That B note gives it like a, a lot of tension. That's like the key thing with that G major chord. It sounds so nice. And then we go straight back to the same progression right here. Exact same, okay? Now, when it comes to your own melodies, the key thing is just to have a fairly simple progression, but you just want to add those tension notes in. And that's exactly why the G major sounds like, it kind of sounds a little bit different, but it, it still sounds like it belongs within that melody. So yeah, I'm gonna get your chord progression, your melody down first. And then you can do the normal things, the routine things like randomize. So hit Alt and R, and that's just gonna play with the velocities, play with the panning, and just make it sound more realistic and what you can also do and what I like to do kind of offset them manually so what I do is I just hold shift and I just kind of like scroll up and down on some of the keys just to just to offset them by like a, a, a fraction and it's not obvious when you're listening to it as a whole but those t tiny little offsets in the keys just gives it that extra realistic kind of vibe now one last thing that I'll do with this is I will play with the pitch modulation on my MIDI keyboard if you don't have a MIDI keyboard you can still do this kind of add these little pitch bends to the sounds so instead of it sounding like this it sounds like this. Okay, you're just giving it a little, nice little pitch bend and that gives it like some like subtle realistic kind of feel to it. So cool, once you've got your main chord progression down, then you can go start adding layers and I feel like this is where a lot of producers get it wrong and they kind of misinterpret what people mean when they say adding layers. Now, adding layers doesn't mean adding another sound and then putting in different notes to kind of fill out the whole melody so you're not leaving any space. What it means is just adding sounds to complement the original melody. Not adding sounds to fill out all the gaps, but adding sounds to kind of enhance the start of each bar or to enhance where you want the bounce to be. And that means it can be as simple as just adding one key at the beginning of each bar. It could be just copy and pasting this initial melody to making it to make it sound a bit thicker. But where I feel like a lot of producers go wrong is they kind of overthink it and just feel like they need to add like a, a super full melody. Come up with like a real catchy, quick four bar rhythm and then just loop that every you know every four bar for the whole of the for the whole of the melody. That's all you have to do. I'm gonna add some kind of short snappy short hitting string sound. Just some C notes. Okay, now I'm thinking about adding some kind of top melody. I'm gonna go with another guitar. What you wanna do is just add a little bit of variation within like different eight bars. And it can be super subtle. It doesn't have to be a whole lot, but adding those subtle changes is what keeps the beat moving and it keeps people's attention. But at the same time, you wanna leave that space there, okay? So I'm just gonna go in and kind of freestyle it and see what I can come up with. Make sure everything's hitting on beat or make sure everything's like, you know, sitting nicely in context with the rest of the melody. So take a look at my top melody, you know, we've got a couple of keys here, 
the keys are sort of you know descending right here, going back up here. You just want that kind of up down vibe to keep the to keep the melody moving. A good train of thought is that if you're making a top melody, if you were to print out on a piece of paper, get a pencil and draw a line between each note, that line should be super smooth. If the line's like going up and down to try and hit every note, then it's going to sound unnatural. I might add one more thing to this melody, and that's it. I want to have this beat lots of space, lots of room for somebody to do something on it. So I'm just going to add some kind of vocal chop to sit in the background. <laughs> Okay, I can like this sound right here, so I'm just gonna have that hit once every eight bar. Crazy simple, there's not like tons of different, you know, there's not loads of different sounds running in there. You just wanna have that, you know, repetitive sound, familiar sounds, and just, you know, focus on the bounce as well. Now, one thing that I normally like to do when I'm sort of building up my melodies is I like to add effects as I add them. So I'm gonna add the RC20 staple plugin for anyone trying to make those retro kind of melodies. Immediately we've got that, you know, sort of white noise in the background, vinyl kind of texture. And then the vocal chop will add in here and we're going to add some EQ to it. Cut the low end, cut the high end. More top end out. Now, you want to have as much space as possible for the artist to do their thing, but at the same time, it has to be unique and it has to be catchy. And that comes with the structure of the beat. And that's, that's honestly, that's the, the big gem of this. The structure is key. So what I'm going to do is add in my pattern. I'm going to split it up by channel. And then what I like to do is just structure the melody before I've added the drums. Just put it into a full beat. That way I know when the drums are added, it's going to flow nicely anyway. All I have to do then is just add some chops and changes to the drums, you know, and, and we'll get into that in a second. So I'm just going to copy and paste these out until I've got like three minutes of a beat. 351. Three minutes of a beat. Good. Now I'm going to take things in and out as the beat progresses. And I could add some variation if I want to, but it's not necessary. I'll take everything out. I'm going to add that top melody after the first eight bar. Yeah, cool. We've got a three and a half minute beat now. Good. Now what you want to do once you have your melody is just think about whether it sounds better in a different key. So sometimes I might transpose it up or down a few keys before I've finished with the melody. But once you figure that out, then we can move on to the drums. There's a few things that you want to take into consideration when you're putting in the drums. And there's a few mistakes, that, again, that I feel like producers sometimes make when they're putting in the drums. And that is just overthinking it. It's the same sort of with everything. It's always overthinking it, adding too many sounds, thinking that you need to fill out all of the gaps in the beat to give it like a decent bounce or like a unique kind of bounce. When in reality, that's not the case. A good example is Dirty Diana by Gunna. If you listen to that beat, it's literally just the 808, a hi-hat and a clap, like there's barely any other sounds in it. So the key thing is just to simplify it, make it kind of repetitive because that familiarity is what rappers need in order to just to think clearly and just think of like, you know, different flows that they can put on the beat. I heard somebody say that a good rule to go by, if the beat doesn't sound finished, then that's probably the good place to stop. Get it mixed and upload it because the, the bits that you think aren't finished is what the artist can add to it in, you know, in order to make it into a full song. So yeah, man, let's go and add these drums in. The 808, clap, and then hi-hat. So I'm just going to add a two-step real quick just to get some initial bounce. Honestly, like already you can kind of hear that, that a lot doesn't need to be done to this with the drums because the melody is kind of holding the vibe of the beat. I just don't think I need to add like a whole lot to this. The melody just carries this beat and that's another thing. Like if you feel like the melody is super fire, then there's no need to take away from that by adding tons of drums over the top of it. Let it breathe. Let the melody, you know, sit on top of the beat. Um, unless you're just going to add maybe like one or two chops in these hi-hats to make it super repetitive. And like seriously, you'll almost be done with the beat. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do, real like quiet chops in there just to give it that little, you know, twinkly kind of feel to it. it. May look like I'm making this like super simple, but trust me, the key, I've, I've been through the whole phase of trying to add loads of different 
bounces within one bar but trust me the key is just to have something nice and repetitive you want your main percussion you know your 808 your hi-hat your clap anything else just add as ear candy make it nice and subtle pan it to the left to the right just to give it some kind of stereo width and then the next thing is just putting it into a structure putting it into a structure that is easy to follow that allows the rapper to add a hook in a chorus a verse and then you're pretty much good to go so what i'm going to do is have an intro so for me i'll probably have this as an intro and then have it come out of the way here And then have my voice tag there, so I'll put the voice tag in. LLB. And the jumps come back in. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate those drums across, but now I'm just going to add a little bit of variation, okay? So this is where the, the structure comes into play and like, you know, keeping the beat interesting comes into play. So I added a little cut right here just to bring it into the next part. Okay, I'm gonna make this one unique. And I'm just gonna cut out some of the some of the 808. So maybe I'll cut out this second 808 that hits like that, and then knock this like last note up a full octave. Yeah, see, bit of variation. Not much though. Okay, and then I might add one extra bit of variation right here. So what I like to do around this area of the beat is just take the 808 out completely. Sometimes the hi-hat, but I think this is quite a slow beat, so then I need something to keep the rhythm going, so. And then we're back to the beginning, then we're back to the chorus, pattern one. Okay, so like that's literally going to repeat now for the rest of the beat. Now this is a very important part, and this is just to add some chops in, give the drums some breathing space, let them kind of simmer down and then you can bring them back. You just want to have that up down kind of energy. I'm going to come and add like a little chop right here. Add a chop here. Maybe have it actually come in right there when those high notes come in. And then again, we're back to the beginning. So I'm just going to duplicate everything across now. And as our full beat. So if you hear any of these beats that are getting placed, that's normally as much that goes into it. Just keep in mind the fundamental things of not filling out all the space. Try and all, almost try and force yourself to finish the beat early. You know, feel like you want to have that kind of feeling that there's something missing from the beat because nine times out of ten, the thing that's missing is someone rapping on it. Quick plug: if you want to get any drum kits, any of the drum, any of the sounds that I've used in this beat, head over to my website prodllb.com. Got all my drum kits on there. Free kits, premium kits, loop kits. And if you want to learn how to sell beats online, there is a free beat selling webinar on there. And there's also my premium courses on there for you to dive into as well. So yeah, man. Goodbye. <laughs>